In this video, I will show you how to go from the general concept of the null space, as was illustrated by these four geometric vectors in an earlier video, to the null space of a matrix. And you will see that there is an exact parallel between the two. First, let's revisit this example. We were given four geometric vectors, A, B, C, and D in alphabetical order, and we discovered that they were linearly dependent, in fact, in more ways than one. For instance, we notice that B is the sum of A and C, and D is the difference between C and A, and these relationships were captured algebraically right here. What did we do next? We next transformed these relationships into linear combinations that equal zero. And this one became A minus B plus C equals zero. Once again, A minus B plus C equals zero. And you will notice that I listed the vectors in alphabetical order because that's the order of our vectors here. And if you paid attention to the coefficients in that linear combination, they were precisely one minus one, one, zero. So that's where the first element of the null space came from. The second element of the null space came from this relationship. If we rewrite this relationship as a linear combination that equals zero, once again in alphabetical order, we'll have A, no B, minus C, plus D equals zero. And the coefficients there, if you were paying attention, were one, zero, minus one, one. So that's where the second element comes from. And that completes the null space. Now, of course, this leaves a lot of questions unanswered that are very frequently asked by students. For example, how do you know that you needed both of these? How do you know that you don't need any more? Because we see other relationships here. And so on and so forth. They're all very good questions, and they will all be answered soon enough. But for now, let's leave those questions unanswered and talk about the null space of the matrix. And all you need to realize that when you're asked of the null space of a matrix, you simply have to think of its columns as four vectors. So this example had four geometric vectors. This example, even though the vectors are organized into a single table, you should still think of them as four individual vectors in R4. And so you see how the parallel is beginning to appear. And now for these four vectors in R4, albeit organized into a table, we have to discover the relationships and translate them, translate them into linear combinations that equal zero, and then organize the coefficients into the null space from those linear combinations. Let's do just that. Let's call the columns of this matrix, I'll step out of the shot, C1, C2, C3, and C4. Now what you may notice is that the second column, C2, is the sum of first and third. Let's write it down. Now that's a little bit unfair that it's very similar to this, but of course that's by design. I pre-planted the same relationships among these columns as we had with these vectors. But that of course doesn't change anything. It's just being clever. Okay, so that's one relationship. Do you see another? Well, you may notice that the fourth column is third minus, I said it right, the fourth column is third minus first. And there you go, that's the relationships among the columns. Now you may once again ask, is that all of them? Did I write down too many? And so on and so forth. Let's ignore those questions for now. For now, let's just see what we do with these relationships. And we do the same thing as we did before. We rewrite them as linear combinations that equal zero. I will actually just say it without writing it. For this one, why don't I write it? C1 minus C2 plus C3 equals zero. And from the second one, C1, no C2, minus C3 plus C4 equals zero. In my mind, I brought these two vectors over to the left-hand side. Okay. And now the final step, organizing the coefficients from these linear combinations into vectors in R4. So in this case, it's a coincidence that these vectors are in R4 and the resulting vectors in the null space will be in the R4. That's because this matrix is as tall as it is wide. But these elements have as many entries 
as there are vectors in the mix. And so the vectors in the null space here will be in R4 because we have four vectors and not because each one of these columns is in R4. And you will discover that it will, it will actually be the same combination as we had before, the same null space, but let's talk our way through it. And so the null space, the first element in the null space will be, by looking at the coefficients, 1, minus 1, 1, and 0 for C4. And as before, we can take any amount of this linear combination and we'll still have 0. So that's why this gets multiplied by alpha. Okay, now looking at this one, we have 1, 0 for C2, minus 1, 1. And once again, we can take any proportion of this linear combination. So that's where beta comes from. So there you go. That's what the null space of a matrix is. Now, without this video, the questions about the null space of a matrix might come as a complete surprise because the concept was explained in the context of geometric vectors. And then all of a sudden you're being asked for the null space of a matrix. So to make the link, all you need to do is to think of the matrix as a collection of columns and you're once again in the situation where you're being asked for the null space of a set of vectors, which of course is a very natural question. The reason why we do this is because when we get to linear systems, even though they're simply decomposition problems, they will be expressed in the language of matrices for very, very many reasons. It's more compact, it's more organized, it's more structured, and of course it's in many ways more algebraic and so on and so forth. So much of the course will actually be occupied with null spaces of matrices, more often than not in the context of linear systems. But in any case, that's what it is and it connects in a completely straightforward way to the way the null space was introduced earlier.